गोविंद गोविंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे जस्ट वैटी सेज कनेक्टिंग टू ऑडियो ऑल्सो लवान्य माई एंड मरीना मरीना कैन यू हियर मी Marina, can you hear me? Maybe not. But Dianidi Prabhu in Norway, Dianidi, living in Norway. Yes. yes. Hare Krishna. Can you can you hear me? Okay, Devishesh Prabhu. Yes, much perfectly. Okay. <laughs> Govinda, Govinda, Govinda. We're on the Zoom now with Mother Sloma. Jai Lavanyamoy and the Glastonbury devotee section. Oh, you're in the bus. We're on the way home. Oh, you're on the way back. Okay. Ritu, put your head. Jai, 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 Ritu Rashu. Where's Brenda and Pedro in the back there? So you're on your way home. Okay, wonderful. And you all survived. Anybody didn't survive? We're all good. We're all good. All right. So let us first give our obeisances. We have also. Um, several devotees with us uh, from Norway. We got Tangarasa Devirasi and also Dainidi Prabhu in Norway, Deva Marita Prabhu in Norway, also Krishna Chaitanya in Ukraine, and Lynn. And I don't remember quite where Lynn is, but she comes in fairly regularly. Maybe America. Lynn, remind me where you are. And Mary Marina also is here. And Divya Shakti is with us too, and she is. In Salt Lake City, I expect. Are you in Salt Lake City just now? Yes, ma'am. So we've all come to London, and uh, we have come to the minibus. First, let us give obeisances, and we are all eager to hear some live news from Glastonbury on your long journey home from Glastonbury. Which is today. Yes, Lynn, Hare Krishna, very welcome. All right. So let us give obeisances and then to Mahapro, to sorry, to Guru and then to Mahaprabhu. So to each other, Bancha Kalpa Trubias Cha Kripa Sindhya Eva Cha Patitana Bhavanebio Vaishnavebio Namaha. Then to Guru, Om Madhyan Tindrandasya Yananda Chakshuram Kukuram Vitam Dena Tadsma As my Shri Guru Namaha Namo Mahavaranyaya Krishna Krishna Prema Padayate Krishna Krishna Chaitanya Namne Gaurasi Shri Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Siddhartha, Shri Vasudeva, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And first of all, all glories to our wonderful Shri Gurudev, 
Srila Govinda Maharaj Ki Jai, wonderful Srila Guru Maharaj, Srila Sri Ramana Ki Jai, wonderful Srila Prabhupada, Srila Bhaktivaranta Swami Prabhupada Ki Jai, Jai. Rupa Nuga Guru Vaga Ki Jai. Jai. So dear devotees, we are happy to come to London and I can say that here in Italy we have been thinking of you each day at the Glastonbury Festival. Number one, you stole one of the Italian devotees, but also Italy stole one of your London devotees in, in, in Ananda Sarupini. So this is action and reaction. But we have our representative there in Rituraj Prabhu, but we'd like to hear from live from the bus from the devotees about your sacrifice over the last few days. Saraswati Didi, maybe you could say a few words. Oh, you're, you're a bit far from the microphone, Didi. Okay, we'll have to just be refreshed by seeing you because actually we can't hear you sufficiently. <laughs> But we heard quite well before. Maybe Lavanya was speaking before. But we can't hear you now. We see Saraswati's lips move, but we can't hear any sound. Can you hear us? No? Yes, now. Now a little bit, yes. Okay. Wait, I think it was to do with the maps was on. Okay, now it's good. Now I heard you very clearly, Levani Moidik. The maps, it was trying to send a message. Well, I'm going to say it's just everyone worked really, really, really hard and you know it's a difficult environment and uh, they, it was really everyone gave 110 percent if not more so that was very nice and encouraging and inspiring but i'm driving so so that she will tell you more well, nice things. Well, like, like to organize a little bit better because uh, mm -hmm. basically i don't know how it is uh, because we <laughs> <She's in power. laughs> <laughs> We also had with us Garata Pandit, who was to put a little table with books and he was talking to people um, in the search for Sri Krishna and he gave out a few books. So that was nice. And also we met with the devotees from India, they were there. Uh, and we joined with them in Harina one day. Uh, Okay, so wonderful. We were able to hear a little and we can understand it was a successful program and maybe later on or next week, next time, we'll hear a little bit more when, it's, when you're a little louder, when it's easier to hear. But we, we are very happy to see live that you're there on your journey and back to the mat, safe and sound. And I can just ask one other question. Did it rain and were you all in the mud all the while? No, the weather was a little bit rainy, but not much. And it was very warm and a lot of sun, so it was okay. All right, okay. Because we always fear that you're walking in mud during that festival. Yeah, that too, but it was good this time. Oh. I think there nine of us, so we had uh, Brinda and Pedro and, and we have... Uh, Okay, Jai. And, and then we have Ritu and Ishanuga, Lavanya, Lavanya Pandit, and Gora Sunda. Gora Sunda and Dinishta also. And Dinishta was there as well. Oh, okay. Excellent. Okay, wonderful. A big well done to you all, and we'll get more news a little later. Jai, Jai to the, this Glastonbury sacrifice for the uh, Sri Chaitanya Sarasarva Temple of London.
because it is all for the temple. It's not, we know it's not for enjoyment for our devotees. Well done, dear devotees. No, Maharaj, no, Maharaj, no. All right. All right. So in the meantime, Rupak has joined us. Ananda Mai has joined us also. Prema Sindhu Prabhu in South Africa has joined us very happily. And Madhu Gopal Prabhu joined and Subhasini also. So here we have quite a gathering. Dandava to all of you who've just joined us since our little beginning time, our auspicious invocation. And just now, a little difficult to hear, but we are happy to see the devotees returning from doing a big sacrifice uh, fundraising at the Glastonbury Festival, very famous music festival. They have to tolerate many things, but they're doing it in order to do fundraising, important fundraising for the London mission. So well done to them all. So Devashish Prabhu, he's given us a theme for today, which is our march towards the infinite is a long journey. And maybe, I do not know if, you, if he would like me to speak first, but I'm happy to at least start with a few words because we see that really the, from the public point of view, this last uh, maybe eight days or so, then certainly here, I've been interacting with the public quite extensively and yeah. mean all kinds of public from the, you know, really people who maybe don't even want to hear, I don't know, people that we're meeting uh, in Rome and at the, you know, we're wearing this cloth and I'm not sure if some people are a little intimidated. I'm not very sure about this. But from the very beginning, like stages of do they have, who I'm speaking to, do they have any faith in God, faith in uh, anything, like beyond material science or beyond, you know, the self-centered idea of, you know, self-improvement self-improvement or whatever it may be and um, from there then some have got faith some have got some faith some have got a little bit more faith some can understand a bit about you know we're not the body but then really we've met people who are all the way through because some devotees we met Srila Prabhupada's uh, disciples also and I just learned on coming back here to Vila Govinda that one of them was quite famous. So anyhow, just see, we met some famous Srila Prabhupada disciples uh, while we are in Rome. And so we've been meeting people with, you can say, no faith, suspicion from that department all the way through to those who not only have faith, but they are connected and they've been practicing for 50 years, so who've made their life Krishna-centered and who want to be with devotees in this way. And then we see, of course, those who have got faith. Then uh, today I was uh, reading from Revealed Truth, because we're reading this regularly in the temple programs in Vila Govinda, and I'm trying to catch up so that I'm not behind because I've been in Rome while they've been reading the revealed truth. And in revealed truth, I, I was hearing uh, Srila Gurudev talking about Raghunath Das Goswami and his absolute mood of just putting himself at the disposal of the Lord. And really, I started to think maybe influenced or because of meeting the people in Rome this week of varied nature, that to be able to read that or to hear that, you have to have faith in Gurudev. You have to know who is the speaker. Because if we don't know who is the speaker, then we can be thinking sort of many things because unfortunately the world is full of like speculation and people we've met, they've got ideas. They read a book by this person, that person. But the books didn't mention anything about Mahaprabhu. Or we are asking me, we try to ask them. So was there any, does that particular person mention Mahaprabhu? 
Does that person have a guru who wrote the book? Does that person, you know, like so we're trying to understand their situation. And quite a lot of the uh, influences come to the Western world, we can understand it is not a solid influence. It is more or less somebody's got some ideas, some speculation, some Veda, some speculation. And for name and fame, for writing a book, for sitting in a big chair, for something, you know, they're, they're uh, promoting themselves, promoting whatever it may be. But when we come to Gurudev and Guru Maharaj, where there's no question of self-promotion, where everything is presenting reality as it's coming from above, then we have to have faith in the giver in order to accept the gift. And so I was also thinking in this way that we are meeting so many people, but we need to be able to get them to understand who are our masters, have faith in them, then they can capture some of the things which we have heard so many times, which we may think oh, they're not so fine. You know, to hear about Mahaprabhu and Nityananda, we think, oh no, we know this. We've been hearing, been reading about them for the last 40, ourselves, 40 years. And Shri Prabhupada's disciples, 50 years and 50 years plus. But we think it's ordinary, but then we understand. Actually, it's finer understanding. So the journey of comprehension, the journey of faith is a long journey. And we can see our own life, we can say, but we can see by seeing the public. You know, everyone's at a different stage on that journey. And if we look in the bigger picture, then from the time of Lord Krishna, if we just start from Krishna, which is not the biggest picture, but start from Lord Krishna, his appearance, he is showing all of his leela, and then after his appearance, then so many uh, misunderstandings came, so many things happened within, this, within the um, theistic world where the scriptures started to be heavily misused in order to do animal sacrifice, in order to forget the purpose of what the Vedas are all, all about, etc., the real purpose. And then this this mentality of society became degraded, became lost from the path of uh, putting Krishna at the center to other uh, self, basically self-interested motives and very wrong things. And so then in the course of time, Buddha appeared. And when Buddha appeared, then he got everybody to follow Ahimsa, non-violence, not to kill animals, not to eat meat, not to cause pain to others. And, I, and he established the Ahimsa, and Buddha is an avatar of Krishna. Indeed, he's listed as one of the ten principal of unlimited, but one of ten principal avatars of the Lord. And then after Buddha, Shankara Charger came and re-established the authenticity of the Vedas. Because Buddha had said, don't, okay, don't listen to the Vedas, listen to me. And Buddha, being Krishna himself, as an, coming as an avatar of Krishna, if he says, listen to me, he can influence people. He is, today we hear this word, a new word in my dictionary, which is an influencer. He was an influencer. But he's Krishna himself and very able to influence people. So he said, oh, don't read the Veda, listen to me. And so he stopped these animal sacrifices that were going on. People uh, basically trying to uh, do some sacrifice which was for a different age, but misusing that for, in order that they can eat meat and in order that they are thinking they're satisfying the demigods so that they can get some reward for themselves. But Buddha, he put a stop to that and showed Ahimsa is a great necessity. And that not to engage in this world of karma, of action and reaction, try to withdraw fully. So God 
he got people thinking. But this, again, you see, this is in the course of time. And to do that, he had to say, don't read the Veda, because they were being mis, uh, misrepresented. So with Ahimsa resettled, with the idea of karma resettled, then Shankara Charja, who is Shiva himself coming by the direction of Vishnu, then he appeared in the world and basically gave what Buddha gave, almost the same, but re-established the Vedas, the, the um, books, the authorized books of, uh, the authentic books, authorized books, which are telling us about this whole science of life, the universe and everything within it. So Shankaracharya re-established the Vedas and then with this foundation, so we're going over the course of so many years, then Mahaprabhu came. And Mahaprabhu came with the Vedas already re-established with some principle of Ahimsa. And Mahaprabhu came and he came with spotlighting the Srimad Bhagavatam. So now, not to just renounce the world and try to go into a, a wonderful floating conscious world but to go into the world of activity, which is the nature of the soul, the nature of life. The soul is the life part of us. The very nature of life is to do something. And Mahaprabhu showed, focusing on Srimad Bhagavatam, how, what is that doing, which is the best doing? What is that activity? It's to please Krishna. It is to please Krishna. And why Krishna? Because they say, oh, but God, so many forms of God. Because Mahaprabhu showed conclusively that the Vedas themselves conclusively come to tell us that Krishna is the origin of all, of all manifestations, avatars, all aspects of uh, the Supreme Lord, of which he has many. He can show himself in many ways for different purposes. But the origin is Krishna, and Krishna is overflowing with beauty, affection, love, sweetness, charm, so much so that the opulent side is unnoticed in general. And so Mahaprabhu, in the course of the, that long journey of bringing the population's consciousness uh, in track, this was all done over the course of thousands of years. Krishna, approximately 5,000 years ago. And Buddha, 2,600 or something like this years ago. And Shankaracharya, after that, I'm not sure the, quite the age. And then Mahaprabhu, 500 and a bit years ago. And so that long journey of the consciousness in the world, the world consciousness of the theistic section, that is, a, you can say, is a long journey. But then the devotees, what those who now at this time have come to the path of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then for number one, we can think and understand, because it is said so, that we've already come on a long journey through many troubles and tribulations, to get this far, to get this body, to get the human body, we've come on a long journey. Through so many bodies, so much trouble, so many this, so much that. But now we've got a human body and we've got some, um, mag we've been magnetized with some God consciousness. We've been magnetized with some Krishna consciousness. Conscious of Krishna, conscious of knowing that Krishna is the Supreme Lord and I am for him. And so somehow or another, we, are, we have unknowingly, because we can't remember before this birth, but we've unknowingly gone on a long journey to where we are now. And in this life, each of us here now, we've got some respect, some understanding of the the reality of what is coming in this pure uh, presentation of Mahaprabhu through the parampara to Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur, to Guru Maharaj, Srila Prabhupada and Srila Govinda Maharaj, making that 
first ever uh, tsunami, practically, we can say, like flood of the Western world with this uh, Maha Mantra and the uh, possibility for us to make our life successful, even in this life. But as Guru Maharaj says, the, the responsibility of the speed of that is somewhat in our own hands. So this is why we also must be careful and try to utilize every moment nicely. And again and again, we are coming, we are reading in Srila both Srila Guru Maharaj and Srila Gurudev, Gurudev Srila Govinda Maharaj and Srila Prabhupada. In their books, in their commentaries and their talks about the urgency, the urgency that we set out, set our own house in order, that we get ourselves firmly on the track and then stay on the track. And then now in this life, we've come to the track, we've got on the track, and now we've got also repeated emphasis how, that, how to and that we must do to stay on that track and not become diverted, diverted, yes, not become diverted or not to dissolve, try to, try to mix it in with the material world or the material world in with it. But now we should take this really seriously, go forward <laughs> safely, and still they're telling us, and don't think that we're ever going to be in such a position where we think, yes, now I've got everything and so there's nothing more to hanker for. And in the revealed truth, which we've been reading, then Guru Maharaj, uh, sorry, Shila, Gurudev, Srila Govinda Maharaj pointing out, like oh. the extraordinary nature of love of God is the genuinely feeling to be the lowest of the lowest and that we have nothing, even though Krishna has given something. But Krishna is of such a nature that he is infinitely infinite. So he gives something and then the devotees are fully satisfied. They know we've got something. <laughs> but at the same time, because that's so wonderful, they cannot but hanker for more and more substance of what is there in that overflowing Krishna uh, prema. And in the description of Raghunath Das Goswami in Revealed Truth, which we read here, fairly recently, then Gurudev makes this kind of very clear and almost, I mean, not almost, he is trying to wake us up and perhaps the almost part is we almost become <laughs> woken up when we read these descriptions. So it is a long journey and when we go on any long journey, even if it's from Glastonbury to London, which may only <laughs> be a few hundred kilometers. When we go on any journey, we must go through some austerity. I've, I've thought before too, that when sometimes we're on a bus journey or a plane journey, then you say 10 hours, and you think, where else would somebody sit in one place for 10 hours? You know, there is some austerity on any journey You've, you, your freedom is gone, you're in one place, this, that, and the other. But this journey of Krishna consciousness, it is a dynamic and living. And what can we say? We are all on the path. And Guru Maharaj makes that, that uh, stress to us. We must try to continue on the path with others. And this will be very helpful. So in this lifetime, we can say the beginning of the journey when we came or come to Krishna consciousness, we're very enthused to see how wonderful things are there. And yes, I know it's real. I must try and be successful. And then Guru Maharaj gives the, the, the description that when we come in close to actually being clean hearted, actually having no taste for the material world, and actually putting our uh, heart and head towards Krishna, his devotees, putting to our head towards the center, actually, when we're coming close to that. <laughs> then again, 
we're getting encouragement because we understand oh, such tasteful things are there. We cannot look to the dirty things of this world any longer. Maybe Devashish will just keep a, an eye on the microphones so we don't get too much. I'm doing that much. Yeah, okay. So anyhow, these are a, a few words from me. And um, here we are, we're all on the journey. And the thing is, we really don't, we are not to judge in any way about others, you know, how great or how small and you know, genuine guru, not genuine guru, this, that and the other. We have to try to keep our head firmly about Okay, am I doing the right thing? Doing the right thing? Are we in the right place? And by good fortune, we already know where are the pure devotees. Where is the, the shelter? So we keep our head there, and in anywhere and everything else, we're not trying to judge or look or see, and we're not trying to think that you know we are we are able to judge. And Guru Maharaj also points out that. When we judge others, it implies that, oh, I know, I am right. I am right. I can judge. I have, you know, my opinion must be correct. But that we must not do. We can be aware of many things. But the judgment part will only come about, about ourselves, not about others. And this way we can stay safely on the journey. So a long journey, but a happy journey. And anybody who's gone, you know, walking or you know, gone anywhere on pilgrimage, uh, even not walking, <laughs> going in the rickshaws around Govardhan Hill now, there's still austerity. I mean, I've never been on a comfortable rickshaw in my life, I don't think. So, I mean, whatever we do, there's some austerity. And so... The material world also has austerity for whatever we do. But our austerity is that we will try to do the right thing, stay on the journey, however much difficulty and however much challenge may come to us. And may that journey be long or short, but there is also an expression that it is not uh, always a destination, but it's the journey itself. So the destination we know is very sweet. And actually, the journey, when we see the example of Gurudev, see the example of Guru Marsha and Srila Prabhupada, we can say that the journey is very sweet also. So these are a, a few words from me. And really, we want to be, we want to be helping each other. And as I said, we almost wake up when we hear some of these things that, that uh, Gurudev, expressed by Gurudev, expressed by Guru Maharaj. And I can give you, I can share with you, and just let me find it one second, my kind of, not exactly quote of the week, but it is, uh, oh, aha. Uh -huh. Well, now, I had it, I had it with me just a few moments ago. Okay, I've got it, yes. Okay, so this is my um, very short, extremely short quote. And this is from Srila Gurudev, and it is from Revealed Truth. It is from Revealed Truth. But this is obviously part of a talk from before and after. And some of you may have heard me say this. I've only been... been describing this for two days i think so it, there's no harm in repetition i am repeating it and because if we've heard before then also no harm in hearing the repetition srila gurudev srila govinda was saying there is really only one question in our lives how may we be supremely benefited okay i'm going to test you on this later I'm going to test myself okay later. There is, really, there is really only one question in our lives. How may we be supremely benefited? How can I be supremely benefited? This is the one question. And 
there is only one answer. That is, satisfy Krishna and you will get the supreme benefit of life. So the question, one question, how may we be supremely benefited? And there is only one answer. Satisfy Krishna and you will get the supreme benefit of life. So this is our journey. And then so many details come within that journey, no doubt. But the journey will go on and whatever difficulties are there, we must cross them. So I can immediately <laughs> think of lots of examples. But I'm talking a lot. And we've got Devashish who were here and lots of Lots of VIP senior devotees, lots of devotees, all of you are senior devotees with us. And so let us hear from Deva Shifu. And Kumkum Kum Devidas has joined us in the meantime too. We really have senior devotees with us in, that, in this sense. And Dana K has joined us, Vijay Krishna who in East London also joined us, Ajita Krishna from the USA also joined us. So really we've got disciples here of Srila Prabhupada, of Srila Guru Maharaj, of Srila Gurudev, and, uh, new, and the generation now, the disciples of our present generation, and also sincere seekers coming to join us. So we are in different parts on the journey, the happy journey to our happy home. So I'll be quiet because I'm a guest in London, <laughs> and I should hand over the microphone to David Shishpo, and I'm sure that Dibi Shakti and Kumkum and probably everybody's got something to contribute on this, but I shall be silent having taken up too much time. Hare Krishna. No, Maharaj, not at all. We've, no. all come, we've all come to hear from you um, some wisdom from your uh, life of service with Srila Gurudev and Srila Guru Maharaj. And this title, I was thinking how... Um, you know, we need to be in, we need to be ready to commit to the long haul, however long it takes. Not just this life, but every life. We, we want to progress towards our um, destination. Not just the, uh, oh yeah, I tried, um, I tried Hare Krishna for five years or ten years, didn't really get anything out of it, you know, now I'm doing something else, you know, but but no, we have to um, understand that there's nothing else, no other, no other imperative in our life. And um, however we may be situated with so many responsibilities and so many obligations uh, in this world, our first and foremost obligation is, for, is to our own um, spiritual life. Uh, without that, everything is worthless, and uh, and that must be, uh, to, as you said, Maharaj, quoting Gurudev, Srila Gurudev, um, to satisfy Lord Krishna. If we satisfy Krishna, then we will get the supreme benefit of our life. And actually, the that is the the title is actually a quote from Srila Guru Maharaj, and um, it's a it's from. Um, the loving search for the lost servant, um, uh, the chapter entitled Beneath the Lord's Loving Eye. And um, I, I just want to read an extract of that, uh, just it's quite short, and then maybe others can, can speak. So this is Srila Guru Maharaj speaking about this very thing. <clears throat> Krishna consciousness is the highest relief work. Our Guru Maharaj used to say that there is a famine of Krishna Kata. There is a famine at present, but is the world suffering from a lack of food? No, the world is suffering from the famine of Krishna consciousness, Krishna talk, Krishna kirtan. So we must try to open offices of food distribution so that we may distribute the food of Krishna consciousness to all souls. Mahaprabhu said, whoever you come across, talk of Krishna. Yare Dekya, Tare Kaha, Krishna Upadesh. Give them the food of Krishna consciousness, Krishna Kata. 
The world is filled with famine-stricken people. <clears throat> we must distribute food, give the life and breath of Krishna consciousness to whomever we meet by speaking about Krishna. <clears throat> that was the feeling of Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati. And Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj carried that out in the West. Srila Bhaktisiddhanta used to say, I do not admit any other conception of famine. The only famine is that of Krishna Kata, Krishna Smriti, Krishna consciousness. With such seriousness, he conceived of our necessity for Krishna consciousness. Krishna is of vital importance to our existence. Only Krishna can give us vitality. And as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Krishna himself distributes Krishna consciousness. Vasudev Ghosh says, therefore, Sri Goranga is my life and soul, my only vitality. If Goranga had not come, how could I live? Jadi Goranga Nahata, Tabe Ki Haite Kemana Daritam Dev. By his grace, I have tasted such valuable food that without this, my life would be completely impossible. Krishna consciousness is the vitality of vitality. Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Prabhupada did his best to give Krishna consciousness to the people of India. And Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj distributed that vitality all over the world. It is by their grace and by the grace of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself that so many have come to Krishna consciousness. Haridas Thakur once told Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, by your chanting of the holy name of Krishna, both the animate and inanimate world has been supplied with food of Krishna consciousness. Whatever position they may occupy, their life is fulfilled. I heard of how when you traveled through the jungle and chanted and danced, the elephants and tigers also danced and chanted the holy name of Krishna. What wonder then should there be if I say that stones and trees have also attained their highest end, Krishna consciousness, when you are chanting? What, what an intense degree of Krishna consciousness has been produced here by your chanting. But in order to chant the holy name of Krishna, something is required from our side also. Amanina manadena kirtaniya shadahari. We should resort to kirtan always, but our attitude should be as Mahaprabhu recommends. Trinadapi sunichena tarorithi suhishnuna. Amanina manadena. Our attitude should be one of humility. And if we think we are being done wrong, still we should be patient and under no circumstances should we work for our own position and prestige. That should not be our aim. When the lower stands against the higher, offense arises. That tendency should be shunned. Primary education is also education but that should not compete with higher education. We must be careful about that. At the same time, the differentiation between higher education and lower education must be genuine. Still, primary education must not be taught as if it were highest, the highest education. That will be dangerous. There is a saying in Bengali, Alpa Vidya Vayankuri. A little knowledge is a dangerous thing. We must be careful about that. Otherwise, our attitude will be suicidal. The question of offense arises whenever primary education stands against higher education. That sort of assertion is offensive. Slow and steady wins the race. Our march towards the infinite is a long journey, not a journey to be finished within a few hours a few days or a few years, and we have to adjust accordingly. It is not that we shall run quickly to make progress and then stop and sleep. It is a long way we shall have to go, and we will only be successful if we develop humility. We should not create any circumstance that invites resistance. Still, if any resistance unexpectedly approaches us, we should try our best to forbear. And we must always be conscious that our guardian's eye is always over us, eager to help us in our campaign. 
We are not alone. We may go on confidently. There is a person above us to redress the wrong that may be shown to us. So we should not take the initiative. We must not allow any ulterior purpose or temptation to induce us to give up our search for Sri Krishna. Let the satisfaction of Guru, Goranga, Krishna and the Vaishnavas be our only objective. Let no other element enter upon our path. Our purity of purpose must always be very scrupulously maintained. We should think, alone I shall go on with my duty. I won't be always searching for someone to come and help me. Let them do their own duty. This is my duty. With this attitude, we shall go on. With this sort of adjustment, our concentration may become more intense. Our confidence in Krishna will be increased and our duty will be pure and clear. We should be conscious that hindrances and obstacles are always sure to attack us, but we must deal with them with humility and forbearance. So this life is not a life of comfort. But in order to develop this kind of humility and forbearance, we must learn to see the Lord's hand in everything. And therefore the Vedas tell us to remember that the glance of the Lord is always upon us. Om Tad Vishnu Paramam Padam Sada Pashyanti Surya. We are asked to see the holy feet of Narayan as we see the sun in the sky. Why the sun? The sun is described as Pradakshaka, <coughs> the seer, the witness. Apparently we see the sun, but really the sun helps us to see. The holy feet of Vishnu means the lowest part of Vishnu. Deha Dehi Vibhago Yamneshvare Vidyate Kochit. His lower part to us is the beginning of realization for us. The beginning of realization is to think that God is always seeing us, as the sun helps us to see. Vishnu's holy feet are like the sun. So we should try to always see everything by the rays of the holy feet of Vishnu. From another point of view, the holy feet are like a big eye spread over the sky. He sees everything. Whatever we do, our guardian's vigilant eye is over our head like the sun. Before we enter into any action, we must remember this Vedic mantra. The Rig Veda is the first Veda. And this is the most important mantra of the Rig Veda. The Brahmins of the Vedic school are told that whenever they do any service pertaining to religion or Varnashram, they must first remember this Rig Veda mantra. Vishnu's feet are always over you, and they are looking at you like a guardian's vigilant eye. Always remembering this, do your duty. If you always remember that he is seeing everything you do, you can't do anything wrong. You won't be able to venture to do anything offensive to the Lord as long as you remember that th through everything, the searching eye, the all-knowing, omniscient eye of the Lord is always watching over you. This remembrance cannot but purify your heart and understanding and the whole of your mental system and help you to approach divinity in the right way. It is not that you can do anything and everything without his knowing, not that you are the master wire puller, of both your own life and of the world, not that you are going to exert your mastery, your influence over the environment in a selfish attempt. Always remember that one big eye is spread over your head, seeing everything like the searching light of a strong X-ray. What even you do not know about yourself, he knows. What is underground in the innermost subconscious region of your heart, he can also see. If you remember this as you move and live, you cannot but be purified. Just as cancer can be removed from the body by a laser ray, the whole disease of material existence will vanish from our hearts by this purifying influence of the divine rays of the light from the holy feet of Vishnu. There we are. Jai Guru Maharaj. Jai Guru Maharaj. Yes, Deva Shifu, you are the MC. 
Well, yes, well, time is passing, of course. But um, yeah, I see Kumkum Didi is here, Dibu Shakti Didi is here. Maybe one of them or both of them like to say something short thing, something short for our benefit. Kum Kum Didi, please turn on your microphone if you can. She can, right? Or do you have to do it, David Shishko? No, she can. I've done. So My... just so every, everybody knows, and because we have some newcomers also, Kum Kum David Asi is one of the early disciples of Srila Prabhupada. She's le led a life of Krishna consciousness under the shelter of Srila Prabhupada, Srila Guru Maharaj, and Srila Gurudev. That's a very brief introduction. But this is, <laughs> should be enough for us all to happily give our respects and obeisances. Dandavat Maharaj, Devashish Prabhu and all of the Vaishnavas. And one of those very early remembrances, even before I had any idea of what the words meant, was to sit and hear the uh, teachings of our gurus. And so all these many years later, that's still my great wish and hope and one of the most pleasant things that can happen in life. So like Maharaj was saying that this journey is extremely sweet and it's not like anything in the material world. We want that result. We want that diploma or we want that trophy or whatever. And it's not like that because on the way is just as wonderful Every moment is just as wonderful as, as the conception of reaching the goal, which we have a vague idea about. But the journey is wonderful because of the association and the assistance of the most great and kind and loving people. And so also loving to hear from you, Maharaj, and also David Shish Prabhu reading these Words, where was that from again? That is from the, the Lord's Loving Search. Okay. For okay. the lost servant. Okay. Yeah. So, so sweet. So much assistance is coming to us. And really, this is all we want is to be engaged in this process because it's immediately wonderful. And then we also have all assurance of where it will take us. So we don't have worries like many people may look to religion or something else too to get relief from suffering but we don't have to think like that even some kind of suffering um, can be immediately seen for its uh, purpose in our life to benefit us and no matter how difficult it is there's no way that when once we've come to understand it, uh, digest what the teaching from above was about, there's no way we would ever say, oh, no, I want to go back to that illusion that I was in previously, where I thought that, you know, these accolades were for me or whatever, or there, there was some something better to do than service in the line of the Vaishnavas. Something that Maharaj <laughs> also reminded me of uh, once when I heard Sheila Gurudev quote uh, Squat, a Scottish poet, Robbie Burns, very quickly, and just two lines. And I, you know, so attracted to the beauty of these two lines of poetry. And I asked Goswangarj, what were they? And, and he um, uh, repeated them to me, and I'm trying to grasp the meaning. And he uh, very quickly just dismissed me, which was a very good lesson because I could see that we're attracted to things like poetry. We think, and, and there is this beauty in this world, but uh, the, um, it, it was a good example of how our, there's, there is all of this wisdom. It is infinite. There's a treasure house of wisdom and very good things in this world but we may not be able to approach them all by ourselves. But when we see that our, our gurus are sitting on top of all of it and they can draw from any other, any culture, it's not a matter of um, we're trying to become some Indian like religion. 
it's a matter of everything is coming from Krishna. And by the grace of our gurus, we can come to understand how all that we want is a part of that. And sometimes we may want something which is is not leading directly to Krishna. And and if we are sincere, that will be corrected. So we're we're very safe. But it's also a fact that there's nothing that we need that our, our gurus are not giving us. We simply, we must pay close attention all the time, always be joyful. And like uh, Devashishpur was reading, the conception of knowing what is our duty. This is discussed so much in Bhagavad Gita, but the way it's discussed here also is so illuminating. So we just need to stay on this path of, of duty because it's, it's uh, higher than mere duty. It's the source of all of our sweet nectar that we seek. Jai Kung Kung Perfect. And we are all hankering for sweetness, charm, beauty. And this is what our masters are giving us. And when there's a little trouble to get that, we, what trouble we go to in this world to get nothing, nothing lasting. So yeah. we are going on trying our best. Let us hear their message and I'll make my one quote from our book binder in Calcutta. An ounce of practice is worth a ton of theory. So we're hearing in order to put into practice, not for entertainment. As Guru Maharaj even said, it can be like a luxury. It's not that we're going to hear as a form of luxury. We're going to get nourishment for doing, for being a servitor. And Kum Kum Diri, there we are from teenage. She has been a devotee and she's telling us, telling us her life, her life experience. And Divya Shakti Devi Rasi, very short because I know our time is our time is up in two minutes. But you're allowed more than two minutes, a little bit more, but you can say everything when you can say like Guru Dev and Guru Maharaj, you can say everything very concisely. So, Divya, turn on your microphone. <clears throat> Dandavats, I'd like to offer my obeisances to all of you. And it's such a pleasure to be here today. I'm not, I haven't been around very much. I, I just wanted to say what you said is to satisfy him, satisfy Krishna. And um, I've just come back from Los Angeles. I was there for about a week and I was with my family. We had some death in the family, but I went there to go to work to do a book table, a big book table that I've been doing every month. And uh, it was very wonderful. And this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to satisfy him. It's like watering the root of the tree. We all know this, you know, if we water the root of the tree, then all his branches and um, everything becomes satisfied, right? So we become really satisfied if we try to satisfy the Lord. And so um, I can't give up my seva of distribution because this is, this is how I've been directed all my life through Guru and Garanga. And I've always been inspired to do that. So, um, you know, just distributing these books and talking about him all day and remembering the devotees and their beautiful example of service and and dedication and just being inspired um, to continue in my life. And um, so the book table was really beautiful and there was over 10,000 people that came in and out the wisdom. And, you know, I had a, a beautiful book table set up and got to talk to so many people about the Vedas and Bhakti Yoga and everything like this. So um, like you said, Shilamara Sudan Maharaj is that we really need to try to satisfy him and um and this i cannot deny or turn away so you know um the devotees here in salt lake city we're a really good uh team here really good beautiful family spirit spirit and you know we've been going out on harinam sankirtan at the markets and had a beautiful sankirtan this week and they were doing they were doing Harinam Sankirtan while I was walking around 101. 
uh, distributing books and talking to people. And that was very beautiful. Met a lot of people. So went out, what, yesterday and the day before, and then um, went out also in uh, California and went to the book table. And it's just like, the more I do, the more I want to do. I just want to keep doing. So it's very enlivening and it's very sweet. And I'm just, um, you know, um, looking forward to actually uh, trying to figure out what to do next, <laughs> how I can satisfy him and satisfy uh, the devotees at the mission here. And, um, you know, we all work together. We have our temple gatherings and it's really beautiful. It's very enlivening. I have some health issues, but I'm still trying to push on and take care of myself and go on uh, with this missionary work, with this uh, Harinam Sankirtan and with this distribution and fundraising. And that's all I can say. I can't say much, but you all are an inspiration to me and all your words of wisdom and all your, your Zoom meetings are really enlivening and I hope to try to, um, you know, be on more, uh, try to associate with you through the Zoom meetings. Um, even though I go out and I talk to people, there's a different nature about me when I'm um, um, in the presence of personalities like yourself, Shila Madhusudan Maharaj, you, David, I just, um, I get a little jammed up sometimes, so, but when I'm speaking out there, I feel like I'm in my natural, my natural habitat. And it's very easy for me to deal with the people and to talk to them. And I love preaching to these uh, new people and um, inspiring them in Krishna consciousness. Like this week, I, you know, I stayed with my sister when I was in LA and I got to just, she got to have my association and I got to have hers and give her some. And I found myself being more tolerant and more kind and our relationship has grown and she's become more receptive to Krishna consciousness. And my cousin, I talked to him like over an hour, uh, about an hour and a half on the phone. And he was like, oh my gosh, I've never talked to this, anyone this long on the phone. And it was all Krishna Kata, all about Krishna consciousness. And he's so kind and he's so, um, sweet and has such a good heart so it just seems like things are starting to move forward in my life in a very quick way I don't know why you know I, we never know how much longer we're going to be here so we have to just um put our hearts on the line here and just do the best we can and just keep up what we're doing so with all the association on the on the internet and you know with our scriptures and our books here it's um it's just a blessing and we should just take advantage of this life and keep doing what we're doing and um please forgive my offenses for not being around i'm just uh, trying to carry on and i just want you to know that i'm carrying on shilamara sudan maharaj you are my heart you are my inspiration you're my everything and then oh. she's oh dear editing this bit out. no it's okay <laughs> you don't have to but um Everybody knows this, you know, you are all giving us all so much life and so much um, nourishment in our spiritual life and go Swami Maharaj, you know, and the Jagannath uh, Parikram is so, you know, beautiful and sweet that you, you all get to do all of this and give us all nourishment. So very grateful for your association and um, um Please keep me in your prayers. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay, Divya Shakti, David Asi. And as I mentioned, in two minutes, Divya Shakti given us so much. And, <laughs> and Divya Shakti, Divya, I can tell you from seeing her in action in preaching, she has a way of anybody who speaks with her, she just has a way to soften their hearts so they listen to her with attention and their hearts are melted. So... It takes, as we hear about Krishna consciousness, we hear that it is heart-to-heart -heart transaction. And really, we can be, can be so much philosophy, so much everything. But they can see the natural enthusiasm and quality of the, of the devotees. And what is our worship of the Lord? We need to come to the Lord through Mahaprabhu. Mahaprabhu, it is his age. How do we worship Mahaprabhu? Through Sankirtan. And that Sankirtan comes in many forms. 
One is the distribution of the books, as talking as well as the chanting. So anyway, dear devotees, we've got a wonderful group of devotees here and really we are being hosted by the London devotees who still they're in the car, I think, on the way back. They've done the big Glastonbury sacrifice for uh, helping maintain the temple in London. And they, yes, they're still on the way back. So we've been in the, the London minibus as well as in East London with Devashish Prabhu, the secretary of the London chapter of Sri Chaitanya Sarasat Mat and we, we, with so many good devotees. So, wonderful. And if we're in the temple, we'll end now with Hari Hari Nama Krishna and then Prashadam Seva. But time is up, so we'll let you all chant Hari Hari Nama Krishna wherever you may be and your Prashadam Seva wherever you may be. We'd like to give you Prashadam too, but what can we do? So, Devashishpu, I pass the microphone back to you and conclude our little meeting. Yes, Maharaj. Jayam Vishnu Pajshila Bhakti Sundog of Indadev Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai. Jai. Jayam Vishnu Pajshila Bhakti Rakak Shida Dev Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai. Jai. Bhagavan Shila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur Ki Jai. Jai. Rupa Nuga Guru Bhargya Ki Jai. Jai. Sri Chaitanya Sarasata Acharya Brinda Ki Jai. Shila Bhakti Ranjan Madhusudan Maharaj ki jai, mm-hmm. Vaishnav Sevan Kari Vrinda ki jai, Harinam Shankirtan ki jai, Nitai Gaura Premanandi, mm-hmm. Hari Hari Bo. Jai Shri Devashish Prabhu ki jai, and our speakers today, Kum Kum Devi Dasi, and, uh, and um, Devi Shakti Devi Dasi, much appreciated, and to each of you here, everybody here, and to the London team in the minibus, now I see, Saraswati Thakur, Saraswati Thakur, Saraswati Devi Rasi has taken over the wheel of the van, driving the bus on the journey, the long journey home. Okay, well done, everybody. My obeisances, our obeisances to each other. Banchakaupatarubhyascha, Kripa Sindhubhya Evacha, Patitanam Pavanevyo, Vaishnavevyo, Namo, Namaha. My Dandavat Pranam. Dandavat Maharashtam. Hare Krishna. Sure. Govinda, Govinda. Hare Krishna, 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 Krishna.